In today's video, I'm going to teach you how to replace the cork on your Harman Mute like a pro. What's going on? My name is Josh Rozepka, and today is Mute Monday. If you're new around here, Mute Monday is a weekly series where I discuss and demonstrate different trumpet mutes. In this week's video, I wanted to share with you some tips for replacing the cork on a harmon mute. So many of you have got mutes where the corks are starting to fall off, or maybe they've fallen off completely, and this is gonna help you to replace that cork professionally so that you get it done the right way. So many people out there, they just kind of throw a cork on there, they get the wrong type of cork, or they use the wrong type of glue, or they don't know how to make a form so that they can cut the cork properly. So I'm gonna teach you all of that in this video. This is an important thing that you need to know if you want to keep your mutes working and in good condition. Now, obviously the first thing you're gonna need is some cork. If you go to your local craft store, uh, you should be able to find some rolls of thin cork. Uh, otherwise you can order this from Amazon and you wanna make sure you get a thin cork and this is not pure cork that's coming off of a tree. This is a composite and it's ground up cork that's basically been uh, stuffed together and, and smooshed together and, and formed into a roll. Unless you've got hundreds of mutes and you're replacing the corks all the time, uh, you don't need that much. So whatever the smallest amount is, order that. Otherwise, find some friends and get a roll and split it up between uh, four or five of you. That way, all of you have got some cork and if you need to replace the corks on your mutes, you've got it on hand. Now, the next thing that you're gonna need is some tape. And you can use masking tape, otherwise uh, blue painter's tape, perfectly well and good. Uh, but just some type of tape that isn't too sticky. You don't wanna use duct tape and you don't wanna use clear tape. Uh, so you want a masking type tape. Next, you are going to need an X-Acto knife. And again, any arts and crafts store, you will be able to get an X-Acto knife. You are also going to want a pair of scissors. Uh, as well as a piece of scrap paper, a pencil, and contact cement. And this is the type of contact cement that you want, all right? Check that out, look at the label. This is the glue that you want to be using. Don't get any other glue. This is the right one for applying corks to your mute. Uh, you could also use a ruler, uh, and we'll get to that in a minute. You don't have to use a ruler, but uh, something to measure with, you're going to want. Additionally, you may want a cutting board. All right, I've got a cutting board here and this is just for me to use the X-Acto knife on with the cork so I don't cut up my table and I don't mess anything up. So I've got all of my pieces of equipment here. Let's dive in and check out this mute. So this right here, this is a 1925 stamped Harman mute. All right, this is one of my favorite mutes. The cork is gone. This is how it was when I bought it. They scrape most of it off but there's still some cork that's left. You need to make sure that the top of the mute is totally clean, that you really get off all of the residual cork. As you can see, there is still cork and there is still glue and you need to get all that glue off as well. There's a couple methods that you can use to really clean it up and make sure you get everything off. Depending on the type of glue and uh, when it was put on, you may be able to heat it up with a hairdryer and, and kind of just rub it all off and clean it all off. Uh, otherwise, you may need to scrub it quite a bit. Otherwise, you could use something like acetone to clean off all of that glue. Make sure you follow all of the safety instructions on the container. And once this is all cleaned up and ready to go, then you can start with the template. So I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna go clean off all of this residual cork and glue. I'm gonna be right back and then we're gonna start building this template so that we can cut the cork to the proper size. So I've just cleaned the top of this mute off. I got all of the residual cork off and I'd say 99% of all the glue. I did used to work in a repair shop years ago. If I had access to a buffing wheel, uh, I would have just kind of gone over the end of it with a buffing wheel to really clean everything off perfectly. But for right now, this is totally fine. Now, what is the next step? Well, we've got to build a template in order to cut the cork properly so it fits. Otherwise, you're gonna just be guessing how the cork goes on because the top of a mute, it is rounded and you can't just wrap a piece of cork around it because check this out. If you wrap it around, you see it's gonna be covering one end and it won't be covering the other. You need to build a template that is curved so you know how to cut the cork properly. And it's gonna look something like this. So I'm gonna show you how to make that right now. All right, so I said we needed some tape, some masking tape, some gaff tape. I've got this blue painter's tape and this works great. 
and check out what I'm gonna do. So I'm just gonna start ripping some pieces and I'm gonna apply them to the side of the mute and we wanna make sure they're going straight up and down. All right, here's the first piece, check that out. First piece on and I'm gonna just go around the entire side of the mute until I'm just reaching the other end and then I'll show you what's next. All right, so here is the last piece that I'm putting on and I'm gonna show you right here. I've got all the pieces overlapping. All right, check that out. They're all overlapping and you see there's a little gap there at the end. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to put this last piece on but I'm not going to uh, totally cover up that gap. I'm gonna leave the slightest little bit in between one end and the other because we're gonna have to peel this off and if we cover it all the way, we're never gonna be able to peel it off. So let me put this last piece on, making sure it's going straight up and down. And there we go. Check this out. I've put that last piece on and you can see there's barely a little bit of daylight in between those two pieces. It's the smallest little gap, but that is gonna allow me to peel this off in just a minute. Now, before I do that, I'm going to take some tape and I'm gonna put it going around the top and bottom, again, ending just at that little gap. All right, so what those pieces, the pieces of tape that I just put around this direction, what those are doing is just holding it together uh, even better. Now, look at the top. You see there's all this tape that's excess. Uh, we're gonna take our scissors now and we're gonna cut that down uh, so that it's flush with the top of the mute. The better job you do at the top of the mute, uh, the easier it is going to be in the next step. So I've cleaned that up, I've cut it all the way down, and now we're just gonna find the edge where we didn't overlap and we're gonna peel this off. So this is going to be the template and well, it's going to be what we're going to work with to create the template. Now, I mentioned earlier, you need a piece of scrap paper. So grab that scrap paper, put it down on your workstation. And what we're gonna do is put this template on there and we wanna make sure we go from the middle and we work our way outwards and that we really kind of press it down and, and kind of stretch it as we go because it was on a curved piece and it doesn't wanna necessarily apply itself so well, but you wanna make sure that you get the top of it uh, where the top of the mute was, that that is really on very nicely and then you press it down and you're gonna smush it down real well, all right, on your piece of paper and it's gonna look something like this. So now what we're gonna do is cut all the excess paper off of this. And make sure as you're doing this that you don't cut any of the tape away, just cut the paper away. All right, so I've just cut everything away and I left just the littlest bit of paper on either edge here, but not on the top, on either edge because uh, this template, again, we didn't exactly join those pieces of tape and we need a little bit extra space. The bottom of this now, check out the bottom of that. That is not right. And the cork, it's not gonna be that tall. So now what we need to do is determine how tall of a cork we want. How much cork do we want uh, as a strip on our mute? Based off of some other mutes that I've got, uh, I, I measured an old Harman mute, I measured a new Harman mute, uh, here's my Dennis Wick mute, and well, I determined that uh, this mouthpiece, my flugelhorn mouthpiece here, the bottom section is the same width as the cork there. So I'm gonna use this to measure. You can use a measuring tape or you could use a, a ruler or something, but I'm gonna just use uh, the bottom of this mouthpiece. It's gonna work just well and fine. I'm going to take it and basically I'm gonna use the top of this as the guide and I'm gonna just mark it a whole bunch of times with a pencil and that's gonna let me know where I need to cut along the bottom. So I'm gonna mark on each edge And then I'm gonna make my way kind of going across, you know, every uh, half inch or inch, I'm gonna just make a little dash. You see there's a whole bunch of dashes there. Now I'm just gonna cut across using my scissors 
and I'm gonna try my best to connect those lines. All right, so I just trimmed my template down. I cut across all those lines and you can see it's pretty uniform in size um, from right to left. And let's see how it fits on the Harman Mead. So the next step is taking this template and a piece of your cork and get that on your cutting board. You don't wanna do this on your, on your table or your counter or your lap, because uh, we're gonna be using an X-Acto knife now. And lay that on top, and now you're basically gonna cut the cork using this as a stencil. You may want to use a Sharpie and trace it and then uh, cut where you traced, uh, or a pen, but uh, I just kind of held it in place and cut it, and well, here, I, here we are. This is an exact match for what the cork should be. Let's try this out. Let's see how it fits. This is good to go. So the next step is to glue this in place. As I mentioned, this is the contact cement that you're gonna want. Don't use super glue, don't use hot glue, don't use Elmer's glue. Make sure you follow the instructions on the contact cement. You have to be in a room with good ventilation. This is powerful stuff and you don't wanna be breathing in the fumes. The instructions for this say that you apply it to both pieces. So you're gonna apply it to the cork and to the mute. And you're gonna put a thin coat on and then you're gonna let it set. You're gonna let it dry for about 10 minutes. And then you've got one shot to really get it put in place properly. Uh, as soon as you touch the two pieces together, uh, they are going to be stuck. So you're gonna really wanna make sure that you line it up properly. And just as before, you're gonna wanna start from the middle and then work your way across each side, really making sure that you're keeping it taut so that the corks really fit snugly and line up at the end. Let me clean up here a little bit and I'm gonna put the contact cement on the cork and on the mute and then we're gonna come back in about 10 minutes. Now the cork may actually take a little more cement than you think. Uh, if it's really dry, it may kind of absorb some, but just put it on there so that you've got a nice thin coating, all right? You can probably see that uh, it, nothing's dripping off. It is just a thin coating on there that we need. And we're gonna do the exact same thing with the mute. One thing I forgot to do and that I forgot to mention is uh, a good thing to do before you start applying the contact cement to the mute, uh, take your template and, and lie it on top of the mute and then take a pencil, not a pen, take a pencil and just kind of trace along the bottom. That way you know exactly how much uh, cement that you put on it, how far down the mute. But uh, I forgot to do that so I'm gonna just uh, do it by eye a little bit and hopefully I won't have to clean up too much afterward. All right, so I've got a thin layer of this contact cement on both pieces, and I'm gonna just let it sit, and I will come back again in about 10 minutes. All right, so it's been about 10 minutes, and let's put this cork on the mute. Now, if your cork is really very dry, and it absorbs a lot of the uh, cement that you put on it, you may actually need to do two coats. And so in that case, do a coat, let it dry, and then, put the coat on the mute, and then one more coat on the cork, and then you can uh, apply it to the mute. We're gonna start from the middle and work our way to the edges. And you wanna line up the top of your finger with the top of the cork and the top of the mute. That way, as soon as you stick it on, it is lined up in the right position. All right, and you're gonna press it on there real good, and then slowly, Work your way around. Really kind of stretching it as you go. And if you have a little bit of overlap, that's okay because you can trim it with your X-Acto knife. All right, once you have your cork put on, if there are any spots that need to be kind of uh, you know, touched up a little bit, then go ahead and clean it up if you didn't line it up perfectly. Uh, so that is what I'm doing right now.
once you've got the cork on there and you've got it cleaned up, uh, you know, be careful. You don't want to mess it up uh, once you put it on there. You want to shave too much off or, or sand too much off. Uh, when you're putting the cork on, just make sure that you, you get it on there in the right position to begin with. Uh, it's okay if a little bit of it actually overlaps with the top edge because you want to make sure that uh, you're not below that top edge because you can always cut some of the cork off, but you can't, you can't add any more to it and you can't move it once it's put on there. And that is how you replace the cork on a Harman Mute. So any Harman Mute that you've got, that's the step. All right, you wanna clean it off really well. You wanna get your tape on there and you wanna make a template, put it on a piece of paper, uh, cut it out, trace it over a piece of cork, cut that out, get your contact cement on the cork. You may need two coats depending on if your cork is dried out or not. Uh, and then get a coat on the mute and stick it on there. And just remember, the better job you do preparing the mute, uh, cleaning it off, making sure you get all of the old cork and residual glue off, uh, use some acetone if you need to, uh, scrub it really well. Uh, otherwise, you may wanna even use a Scotch-Brite pad, you know, really get at it. So now you know how to properly replace the corks on your Harman mutes, and hopefully this comes in handy and hopefully this is able to help you out the next time you find yourself with a Harman Mute that has got a busted cork. You can just fix it at home. It really doesn't take that much time and it doesn't take that much equipment. All you need is an X-Acto knife, uh, some scissors, some tape, uh, contact cement. A lot of these things are, are things that you already have at home. The only thing that you may need to order or go out and buy is a roll of cork but you may be able to get it locally at an arts and crafts store. So I hope that this video helps you out and that now you feel confident in replacing the corks. If you enjoyed this video, please let me know, leave a comment, hit that like button and make sure you subscribe. I wanna thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video.